Hi, Aaron here again. Now I'm always being asked, what's it like to go to school in the US? Or do they do this in schools in the US? And we decided to put together a little video outlining the differences and similarities between Russian and US schools. <laughs> Firstly, let's talk about the little dudes. The wee little babies. Kids in the US start school as early as age three or four. Sometimes even earlier, depending on if the parents want them out of the house. I don't want to go to school. I don't care what you want, you're going. Now come no. here. Yes, you do. This is called play school, day school, pre-kindergarten, detsky sad. But kids aren't legally required to attend school until age five or so. Now, I started school in Alabama, and the state requirement was age five for my birthday. But if I had been in California or Texas, I may not have started kindergarten until six or maybe even seven. In the US, there are three main schools. Primary schools for kids ages five to 12, middle schools for ages 12 to 15, and high schools for ages 15 to 18. Now, kids are legally required to go to school all the way up through grade 12, bringing the grand total of required years in school up to 13. 13. 13. I'm just not gonna use it. <laughs> and this is a bit different from Russia where kids will go to school at age seven and stay in the same building until grade 10, yeah? Grade 10, I knew that already. 11, after graduating from high school, a kid can go to a vocational school and do an associate's degree or go to a university and do a bachelor's degree and then a master's degree and then a doctoral degree. Now, I went to school in Kentucky and have a bachelor's degree in music. A big difference between the structures of US schools and Russian schools happens when kids enter middle school. Now, kids will come to school and they'll go to their homeroom and they'll meet with their homeroom teacher. Then a bell will ring. Ding, 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 ding. And kids will run to their next class where it's taught by a specialist teacher. So you'll go to a different classroom for history, a different classroom for music, a different class for English, and a different class for art, drama, etc., etc., etc. Art, drama, etc., etc., and art. I know this song. <laughs> so like when I worked in a middle school, I only taught music classes. Like I couldn't get a job teaching history in the US or English in the US because my like my education degree and my certification is music education. So like to teach middle school science, you have to have a degree in science education or middle school education with a specialization in science. Kids will be divided based on their levels um, of comprehension and on their interests. So for example, when I was in high school and middle school, I signed up for lots of English and music classes, but I didn't take many math classes, so now I can play a mean trumpet, but I can't do my taxes. But don't worry, schools do require a certain amount of core subjects, so you have to do a couple science classes, you have to do a couple history classes, but the rest of your time, you and your parents would structure together. Now in Russia, by grade 11, you have to be an expert in math, an expert in literature, but in the US, when you get to a certain point, you're allowed to choose, like, I just want to study geometry, or I just want to study creative writing. So there are a few options once you reach a certain level, where in Russia, you have to have all of this information to pass the exams. Unlike Russia and the UK and Hogwarts, US schools are less whimsical. We don't have head boys. We don't have starsta. Unas bez starsti klasi. Just say it in English. <laughs> no starosta klasa, no houses, no Professor McGonagall, no floating ghosts, and no floating paintings. It's not much fun. Grades. Grades in the US look like this. They go from an A to an F scale, and they're used from middle school. Now I can proudly say I've never gotten an F. Never? I have gotten a few C's, which my mother loves to remind me about, but. I'm not bad, I'm not bad. Unlike Russia, we don't have diaries or... Dnie 
pevnik. Never mind. There are some schools that still use a pen and paper method of recording grades with a big book of test scores, but there is a big move for grading online and putting test scores in an online database. But everything is kept very confidential to keep students from not feeling like they're competing with other students and to make school more about personal achievement rather than competing with Fred or competing with George. It seems to me there's a more competitive spirit in Russia. Why don't you let me know in the comments what you think about this? High school is full of tons of memorable events. First is... Prom. Now, prom is where everyone gets up... <laughs> gets up. We wake up in the morning and go to prom. The end. Let me try all of that again. Prom is a huge dance at the end of the year where everyone gets dressed up in tuxes and fancy dresses. And the rich kids rent limousines. The poor kids have their moms drive them. That's me. What's up, ladies? Sometimes they'll rent out a hotel. Sometimes it'll just be in the high school gym where 16-year-olds will show off their dance moves. It's not very impressive, but it's a lot of fun. Next up is homecoming. This is the opening of the American football season. There'll be another big dance. There'll be a whole week leading up to it. Well, it's called Spirit Week. And there'll be different themes for each day. So you'll wear school colors one day, and you'll do crazy hair the next day, and you'll dress in your pajamas the other day, and it's all supposed to get everyone hyped up for the football match. Woo, Friday Night Light. A small thing in the US is schedule. Now, not all schools in the U.S. start on the same day. A school district, that's the same schools in region or town, will decide on a starting day for all of their schools, usually sometime in the beginning of August. Whereas in Russia, everyone starts on the 1st of September. There's a set number of days that a student needs to attend school. Most are around 180 days, but it varies state by state. Now, in the US, there's a special thing called a snow day. If there's too much snow, or even a little bit of snow, school will be canceled. School will be canceled. <laughs> and then that day will be put onto the end of the year. So if it's a very snowy winter, sometimes students will go to school all the way into July. What? I've heard that in Russia, there's a thing called quarantine. Now, unlike the US, you guys don't seem to have to make these up at the end of the year. Can you tell me if that's correct? Feel free to leave it in the comments. Plashka Posle High School. Let's talk about after high school. Now, there are a few things someone can do after he graduates high school, other than joining the workforce. One of these is to join a vocational or technical school, where someone would study accounting, or business, or cooking, or fire science, or become an EMT. These programs take around two years and are less selective than universities. Another option would be to go to a university or college. Now, unlike the UK, the US uses these terms pretty interchangeably. So a college and a university are the same thing in the US. At these institutions, someone can earn a bachelor's degree or a master's degree afterwards or a PhD or doctorate after that. Now, a bachelor's degree usually takes around four years to complete in the US and a master's around two and a doctorate are around three or four. Now, the prices of these uh, degrees can vary wildly depending on where a person studies. If you're at a state school, um, per year it's about 10,000 to 15,000 US dollars a year. And if you go to a master's program, it's usually a bit higher of 20 to 30,000 a year, depending on where you study. There are also private institutions in the US which would have even higher costs, which means that when you graduate, it'll end up being a total of mm, 50,000 to almost 100,000 US dollars. Cha-ching. If your students are interested in studying in the US, don't let the cost discourage them. There are tons of scholarships and grants and funding options all available online. We'll put a database right here.
Now, I came to Russia as a teacher, not as a tourist, and I think the education systems across the world are very, very interesting. So I'd love it if you posted a couple things in the comments about the schools in Russia, about your experience as a teacher, as well as any questions you might have about the US for me, and I'll try to answer them next time. Thanks for watching. See you around. Mm, the moda. Steel. <laughs> Zachiam. Now, if your students are interested in studying in, in Russia, in Russia, if they're interested in studying in Russia, I have lots of advice. The other thing in the US, like some vocations, like if you're like a plumber or a welder or something, like you can make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Like you can make tons of money, way more than teaching. Plashka <laughs> Kanyets.